cochlear implant, what can I say about it? It's virtually, virtually unbelievable. First of all, let me relate to how my life was with you and the family, all my relatives and my friends. I had, over the years, my hearing deteriorated to about 5%. Uh, I managed for quite a considerable number of years and managed to get along with people but when it got down to 5% it was virtually impossible to stop myself becoming a recluse. Um, it was great, with great determination that I really had to force myself to go out. Um, I used to go dancing, we still do go dancing, but of course I had to go into sequence dancing. I couldn't hear the music. With sequence dancing, everyone dances exactly the same way, so you can pick it up. If I watched the person in front, I did exactly the same. And my life before my implant was virtually, virtually as a recluse, apart from my f family. Um, I could make no arrangements whatsoever. I had to rely on everyone else to make my arrangements. I had no independence. There were times, I must confess, I was reluctant to go out to buy various things. Um, you do also run against people. It's abuse. Some of the people you go into shops with, to them, deafness is a disease. It's not their fault. They basically do not understand what deafness is. I do not think that uh, people are educated enough to know exactly what deafness is and how it affects people, unless they have someone in the family who is deaf. And even then, to the rest of your family, you are a real, real pain. There is no doubt about it. They have to emphasise every part of what they are telling you and everything that they do, it's emphasised beyond the normal complex of life. So my life before was virtually, it wasn't, I'm not going to say non-existent, because I had a quality of friends around me which helped me completely. But when I left those friends and went back to my own home, I virtually became a recluse. I did not want to go anywhere. I went then to the hearing centre about once every month and I saw the ladies who looked after me, which for 10 years at least, those ladies kept my life going. And I have to really thank a, a lady called Sandra Mabbitt who, she was absolutely fantastic with me. And you cannot understand when I went for the last, the very, very last time, and she said to me, Leslie, there's nothing else I can do for you. We have reached the ultimate. I've got 5% deafness. How could I cope? But, she then said to me, would you consider a cochlear implant? And on my words, Sandra, I would consider anything. Um, and I was told that I would be able to have my cochlear implant. I was elated. Uh, I stayed in this little room for another day and then they wheeled me into the main ward while well, the guys there had various operations and uh, of course I couldn't hear what they were saying. But I did have a course of lip reading which is very good. I, I could lip read and I could understand from various gestures of people what they were saying. But nevertheless, my stay in hospital, I cannot fault. And the people that looked after me, I cannot fault those otherwise. And my recovery, according to uh, David Proops and Louise and even Patrick, I only stayed in hospital two nights. I went in on the Monday and I came out on the Wednesday. And that's how good it was. Uh, I, one thing I will say, the only thing that irritated me was the fact down the back here I had the scar and it was glue. <laughs> it was actually glued and it was glued down there. It wasn't an irritation that upset me, but 
it's one of those things which you keep touching and think, well, that, that's all. That's the only thing that didn't bother me. But that was the only thing that I can say I felt as though I had an operation. But I was deaf then. And for a month, I was deaf, which didn't bother me. I had my television, I had my computer. Um, I couldn't hear a thing. I was absolutely mutton. And uh, the month went by quite quickly. And then the crunch came. The 16th of November, I was informed I was going to be switched on. And I sat there thinking, what's going to happen to me now? Am I going to be, am I going to be disappointed? But I still had this feeling inside, no, I'm not. I had the confidence that these guys had installed into me when they talked to me. First of all, the noises came through. I think it was about ten phases all the way through. Very, very faint. Deet, deet. Contact, contact. All the way through. It took about 15 minutes. No problem. And then, lovely, lovely Louisa said to me, I said, I'm going to switch you on. Close my eyes for a few seconds. Will I be able to hear my granddaughter speak for the first time? She's five or six. I'd never heard her talk. Will I hear the birds sing? I think so. OK. Do it, girl. And she did. And she said to me, can you hear me? I'm doing the same thing. I'm reliving it. Look. I said, yes. I could watch television. I still had the subtitles. But I could hear a lot more sound than I heard before. That there were strange things to me. It was life. My life had come alive. Everything that I had. My home, every door in my house squeaked. I never heard that until I had this. Every time I went up the stairs, the door was squeaking. So I had to oil 10 or 12 doors. Footsteps, kettle boiling. My life had come alive. I had become a my own person. I could do exactly what I wanted to do, only to an extent, because I did not know how far my cochlear implant would progress. And it did. I have just been, I would think it's about 18 months now since I've been switched on. And it has improved like wine. It's matured. I have now the light and the dark of a person's conversation. When they talk to me, I can hear the highs and the lows of their voice. Um, that excitement. I can hear my granddaughter, granddad, she squeaks with delight. Jeannie's grandson, he comes and he talks to me and he squeals and he laughs. And I can hear that. It's wonderful. I can make my own arrangements on the telephone. And believe you me, that is a wonderful thing to be able to do now. I can talk on the telephone, talk to Jeannie. I can talk to my daughter. She lives miles and miles and miles away. I can talk to anyone on the telephone. I can make arrangements to go on holiday, which I had to rely on Jean to do that, or one of my other partners. I can go up the stairs and I can switch on my computer and I can put the, the news on and I can hear every single word without the subtitles. I appreciate everything around me. I did before to an extent. I can hear the music when I go dancing. Before I listen to the beat of the drum, boom, 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 I dance to that and watch the guy in front of me. And if he made a mistake, I made a mistake. Much to the disgust of my partner, but nevertheless. But I don't have to rely on that now. I can hear them announce things. I can hear so many things. I can go into a shop. I can talk to the girl or the man behind the counter. I can say exactly what I want. I don't have any problems. 
I can go into a restaurant. Most of the pubs now have a meal. You have to go up to the counter to book the meal. I used to have to go up with a friend and he would explain what I wanted. Now, I go up on my own and I say exactly what I want and I, I know exactly what I'm doing with my life and where I am going. Thanks to the cochlea. This is, I cannot explain, every single morning of my life when I put this in my ear or on top of my head, I become alive. There are occasions I've gone to bed with it and I'm so used to this thing, I go to bed, I wake up in the morning and wonder where the birds have gone and then I realise I'm not plugged in. It's the most wonderful thing that's happened to me apart from being born and having my family and people like Jeannie Van Lee. This is the most wonderful, wonderful thing that has ever happened. And I'm so utterly and completely grateful. My life is back 30 years ago to how it was before. And it has brought my personality back out to how it was before. And that's all I can say.